Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. I had a good friend of mine, Mark, from over at Nova Cell Films. You can check him out in the description below. He's a big target archer, a traditional archer, shoots with a recurve off the shelf, and he asked if I could fletch up uh, a dozen arrows for him. So I figured that since I was going to be uh, taking the time to do uh, do the whole process, that I would make a video of it. And So uh, starting with uh, the bare shaft, no insert. The knocks were shipped this way. I'm going to pull them out so I can cut it. I'll show you the uh, homemade jig I have created for that, as well as uh, uh, fletching up individual feathers here with my Bitsenberger jig. So I'm glad you've chosen to uh, come along with me. I hope you enjoy and I think without further ado we can get started. My homemade arrow jig as you can see here and I've been uh, fletching up uh, and cutting up a lot of shafts here for customers and for myself but um, so this is the whole thing. Uh, I just built this out of scrap lumber that uh, uh, I had laying around along with my father-in-law and uh, this right here is a very inexpensive uh, cheap very uh, low voltage um, Dremel tool from Harbor Freight. Uh, one just opened up here um, down in the uh, Central Prie region. And uh, I have this into a jig. So what I did was, and the sock is in here because when I originally had this, I had an actual Dremel tool, like the, uh, the full size one, and um, I no longer uh, own it. Um, and uh, so I had to kind of make do with what I had. But this is just original jig here. This is just, uh, I took a, uh, this was a one by six, and I cut it out here and I uh, created a hole in the inside. And then I just uh, ran all thread through the whole thing here. And everything's threaded up uh, through here on the base. Okay, and it comes up this way, and then I just have wing nuts here. So I just put this in, bracket, and then I uh, just uh, screw down the wing nuts and clamp it into place. Works really, really well. This here is the actual uh, cutting area, as you can see by all the uh, carbon dust that's everywhere. Uh, this is where the arrow lays. So what happens here is the blade is barely sticking out past the uh, shelf there, and when the arrow shaft is laid onto it, it just barely makes contact with the arrow shaft there. Try to zoom in a little bit. Again, Paul, just for the lighting. And it just barely cuts it. Just right through. It doesn't go through the whole thing. So when I get it up here, I have to actually get it on. I have to spin the shaft. You, I think you can see that on camera in order for it to cut. Um, so on here, um, I tacked down a uh, yardstick here. And so I started it here at a little under four inches, uh, which is where from the edge of this cutting uh, blade here all the way out here. And I just used the standard carbide blade here. This is the kit that it came with. It you know comes with like 30 or 40 of these little blades and you go through them pretty quickly because they're just easily fragile but they cut through carbon shafts no problem. So this is fantastic. I think I spent like 15 bucks on this Dremel tool. It's going to last forever as long as I take care of it. So pretty pleased with it actually. Um, so uh, but anyway back to the back to the saw here. So this is uh, the uh, obviously the measurement tray that I have out here. It's a yardstick from Home Depot. And uh, so uh, my buddy Mark he has a 30 inch draw length so I'm out here at the 30 inch. I've cut a hole, and this is a piece of uh, uh, fiberboard here, and I've cut a hole into it. So what I do is when the arrow is down here on this shelf, in here goes the knock, and it goes right in that hole. And then what I do is when that arrow is being cut, I just spin it, and the knock is held in place then. Can't go anywhere, which is fantastic. So when the whole thing, oops, I'll put this, see if I can get that back up there. When the whole thing is put together, it's nice, neat, and organized, just like so. Hold this board in place. I had just some um, L brackets, just some tiny little like picture framing L brackets here, and then I picked up these spring clamps um, from Home Depot when I picked up the yardstick to hold this board in place here, and it's going to definitely last me a lifetime of use. Okay, so we're going to start uh, cutting up some of the shafts here, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to kind of be able to see it um, well enough in action and uh, see how quick and uh, and easy it is. So uh, let's get to cutting.
it's 12 shafts in uh, less than three minutes. So uh, that's not bad. So I'm ready to clean them up and uh, glue some inserts and get to fletching. Okay, so the next step after cutting is to square off the arrow. Um, no matter what the arrow saw, if it's an actually industrial made and you buy it professionally, or like mine, you make it, um, all arrows, I believe, should be squared with a squaring tool of some nature. Uh, what I have here is a little uh, uh, rock tool from Easton, uh, Easton Archery, and on it, it's just a small uh, cylindrical shape and then it has a little bump at the top there. Yeah, And all I'm doing here is I'm going to take that bump and I'm going to place it inside the arrow shaft and then I'm going to uh, spin uh, the arrow on top of it. And you can hear that probably if you can hear it over the sound of the dryer in the background there. Apologies, it's, uh, it's laundry day in my house. Um, but I like to do it on a flat level surface like that, not holding it up in the air. So I'll lay it down flat on my workbench here. I'm gonna pull, I will put the uh, shaft straight up in the air, nice and flat against that rock, and then I'm going to move it back briskly. And it is going to remove some carbon, so you're going to have to worry about that. My workbench is covered with it, so I'm not too uh, concerned about it. But uh, I'm just leveling down the edge of this arrow shaft and kind of look at it here. You can feel it under your hand too. If it's kind of rolling around the rock instead of just kind of moving flat on it, you'll feel it. But uh, I have 12 shafts to do this with, so this is going to take some time. Okay, so we have squared off the shafts, and um, because we squared off the shafts and we cut the shafts, and these are carbon shafts, there's a lot of carbon residue floating around, yeah? Got it all over my hands, all over my workbench, all over on my squaring uh, rock here. But also, there's a lot inside the shaft from where you cut it. And you don't want any of that in there. Um, it will uh, uh, stick to your adhesive, whatever you use, and it won't uh, cause a good bond between your inserts or if you have glue in points, your glue in points, and the inside wall of the shaft. So you have to clean those out. The best way to do it is to use a Q-tip and a little bit of acetone or isopropyl alcohol. I prefer acetone. Um, you can pick a whole bottle of it right off of uh, Walmart, right out of the ladies' nail section, and um, I just use it, just dip the uh, Q-tip right in, clean out the inside of the shaft, and you're fit as a fiddle. So I have to do that now. Don't worry that you're uh, going to damage the inside of your shaft using the acetone. It's perfectly safe on carbon and aluminum shafts. It's been done for a very long time. Don't dip your knocks in it though. Um, these knocks are in here. I'm going to remove them to clean the whole shaft eventually uh, here in a little bit. But don't put your knocks in. It will eat through the plastic of that. But um, for the carbon shaft, it's perfectly safe. So I'm just going to dip this right in here. And I'm just going to take it and I'm going to work it. Uh, I'm just going to spin the shaft around it just like I spun the shaft around the uh, squaring tool, the squaring rock. And when I pull this out here, you can see all that. Look at all that carbon dust that's in there. I don't want anything to do with that. Let that air dry off the side. I'm going to flip this Q-tip around. Just a uh, one use per. Once it's dirty, I'm not going to use it again, so I'm going to use the other side of the Q-tip. Again, spinning the shaft around it, giving the Q-tip a little bit of a twist as well, just to make sure I coat the entire thing of it, because it's all covered in acetone. Look at that, that's even worse. So I'll throw that Q-tip off to the side, get a new shaft, and repeat. So I'll see you in a little bit here. Okay, so that's 12 shafts that are clean, six dirty Q-tips. So now, once this uh, is all cleaned up here, I can uh, snag a paper towel and I'm actually gonna clean the whole shaft off. Uh, fair warning, 
These here are uh, Easton Arrows. They're Easton Power Flights, so they're on the cheaper end. Um, but they still do have a very nice crest. I actually kind of like the look of them. Um, and one thing you have to be very careful of when you use a cleaner, especially something powerful like acetone um, or isopropyl alcohol, if you rub um, the paper towel, as I'm about to do here in a moment, over the crusting, um, of this uh, Easton uh, power flight shaft here, I'll actually end up removing it. And I don't want to do that. I'll actually end up cleaning off the, the ink of it first and then the adhesive backing. I don't really want to do that. It's a nice shaft. It's a nice arrow. And it's, in particular, since this arrow is not for me, I definitely don't want to ruin it. So be very cautious of that. So I'll go within maybe an inch or two on, uh, on either end, but no closer than that. Okay, so we have cleaned the shafts with acetone, being very cautious not to get it anywhere near the cresting or the knox. And now um, my uh, uh, next step here is I'm not going to touch anything from the cresting to the knock. That is now going to stay hands-free. You have a lot of oils in your hands. I have a lot of carbon dust on my hands still from cutting the shafts and swearing them off. So um, I'm not going to touch anything. Okay, so I brought you in a little bit closer. You can kind of see over my shoulder and uh, observe what I'm doing here. Um, so uh, my buddy Mark, he wants, uh, these are uh, five inch right helical feathers. He wants the hen feathers to be a fluorescent orange and the one cock feather to be a uh, white. I have a Bits and Burger jig here. There's lots of different jigs on the market. Uh, Bits and Burger, it's a solid jig. It's cast zinc, I believe, cast zinc and aluminum alloy. Um, so it, it's going to last forever. Um, uh, the jig um, is uh, standard. The thing that adjusts and changes with it is the clamp. This is a right wing uh, uh, helical clamp here. And you can see to it, as I adjust it here on the camera, that it has some twists. So the back part of the feather is here, and then it goes up at an angle to this point here. And it has a twist to it. And this is a right helical twist. They make a right helical, a straight, so there would be no twist to it whatsoever, and a left helical. Obviously, if it's straight, there's no um, uh, twist put to the feather, and so that's what the helical is. And so there's no spinning of the arrow in flight. That's what the feathers are in, and uh, blazer veins, uh, if you choose to start with something along those lines, are made for. They're made to spin and stabilize the arrow in flight. Um, and so a straight fletch doesn't do that necessarily. It does stabilize the back end, but it doesn't add spin to the arrow. But if you think of it like a football, a football uh, is, goes the furthest and is the most accurate when it's spinning. And the same is true for a bullet or an arrow or a baseball. So why you wouldn't want to have it for uh, that spin for your arrow, I, I don't know. but. Um, I've always gone with a right helical, um, and I go with a three degree offset on a right helical. I have a paper towel. This one's completely dry. Um, this is the last step that I do before I um, uh, put the uh, shaft in the jig. Again, I'm not touching it below the crusting with my bare hand, uh, anywhere between, or excuse me, above the crusting, between the crusting and the knock. I'm going to take a dry paper towel, though, and just to make sure there's no residual dust or debris or nastiness, I'm just going to rub this paper towel. Uh, up and down it. I have cleaned it with acetone, so there shouldn't be anything on there, but just in case there's some residual acetone or maybe a little, a uh, few more granules of, of carbon that I missed, I just want to be super cautious. And from what I can see here, I didn't miss anything, so that's, uh, that's really comforting. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to place it um, inside my jig. So I'm going to uh, line my knock indexer up here. Okay, so it's in there, it's not going anywhere, it's fantastic, it's all set up. I always start with the, uh, with the cock feather, which is in this case is the, uh, is the white. Pull this out here. And uh, when I fletch feathers, and for those of you that are getting into fletching your own arrows, um, feathers you want to kind of uh, give a once over. Blazer veins and molded plastic veins um, are very standardized. All of these are exactly the same cut. They're all exactly the same mold and the same shape because, well, they're machine created. However, um, a feather um, is comes from a bird, and all birds are different, whether it's a duck or a goose or a turkey. And so you kind of want to give them the once over. Now, they are cut by a machine, but sometimes the uh, the tip is, is cut a little bit differently. The backing is cut a little bit rougher. The bottom's not perfectly smooth. So I like to give them a once over to make sure that before I try to adhere it to my shaft, it's all uh, in excellent order. Put it here in the clamp. Again, I'm only using the side of the quill base for leverage. Now, you will have to push it a little bit to get it into the clamp. So, but try to minimize that. I like to use two fingers, only pushing two or three places at the most. Slide it in. 
So I can see when I first put it onto the jig here that the back is lined up, but since this has a twist to it, it's trying to twist itself around the shaft. And since all shafts are different diameters and different thickness, for instance, the last shaft I was fletching in this was a fatter aluminum shaft. So it's amount of helical is different. So I'm going to have to come back here and play with these dials on the back of this Bitsen burger to adjust this, to move this jig left and right to make sure the back and the front are both making contact with the shaft appropriately as well as the feather part of it in the middle. I've gone to the back of the jig and I've adjusted the dial so that this feather is fitting to the shaft with that right helical. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now uh, adhere it to the shaft here. So I'm going to use a uh, boning uh, fletching tape. You can use a fletching glue, you can use a fletching tape. I like the fletching tape for feathers. It's very quick, it's very efficient. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, roll a little bit of this off, get it stuck, and we can start fletching. Okay, so I uh, already uh, have uh, uh, fletched on the cock feather, and I'd like to show you with the uh, the orange one, and the reason being is because that white did not show up very well on camera. So I can show you with the orange one. So. Um, so again, we're pulling it out. We're not touching the bottom of that quill. Um, these white feathers here are um, uh, True Flight, and these ones are Gateway. I find Gateway is a much better feather. It's just kind of my personal experience. Um, I don't need to clip this quill. I like it the way it is. Um, the feather looks good. The bottom looks nice and sanded, so I'm just going to grab it here, put it into my clamp. So I have to be very uh, confident and very assured that these all are going to match up, that they're all the same length, because if they're not, they're all in the same place because if they're not I'm gonna have a funky looking arrow and I don't want that so this one actually is a little too far forward so I'm gonna slide it back oh there we go oh that one looks much nicer okay always do it I do a dry run with every single feather every single blazer vein every single whatever I always do a dry run putting on this tape this rolled tape here I just grab the uh, tag in here, try not to touch it too much, the bottom of it obviously, and then I just place it onto the front here of the feather, and then I just put it, it on in very short, you know, centimeter long segments, quarter inch segments, pushing it down, and then you kind of unroll in my hand here. When I get to the end, I just take a pair of scissors, small scissors here, clip it off, okay? Now you can probably see the uh, the red backing there. I mean, it probably didn't show up too well on camera. But there's red backing over the white quill. So I'm gonna take my scissors here because they're nice and sharp and small. And I'm gonna use it to lift it. This is double-sided tape, so it has a backer to it. I'm gonna use this to lift that backer off. There's that backer, so we now have double-sided tape. And now I gotta be very uh, smooth with this. I did a dry run and it fits, but I don't want to muck it up here. So I have it on the jig. It's not all the way pushed down. And I'm going to take it. I'm going to put, apply even pressure on both ends. Okay. Now I am going to break my cardinal roll earlier, which is not touching anywhere between the crest and the knock. And I'm going to take one finger and I'm going to push up on the shaft as I hold the clamp in place. Because being tape, I, I want to make 100% uh, sure, uh, with 100% certainty that I'm making a good adhesion between the quill, that tape, and the shaft. The beauty of tape is that there's no drying time. I just put my hand down, open up the clamp, and there she is. Okay, so I just adhered the second hen feather, the third total feather. I'm gonna take the clamp off here, pull this out. Oh, I think that's absolutely beautiful. It's got a nice right helical on there. If you don't know what I'm talking about again, that helical is this kind of twist to it. You can see how the, uh, if I can kind of position the camera correct, you can see how the feathers kind of have a twist to them. And that'll cause the arrow to spin. As you see it, it'll spin this way. And it will stabilize it in flight. I have uh, 11 more arrows to do, so I'm going to go ahead and get that started. And uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Whew, okay, so that's by far the most time-consuming process of it, especially when you're doing a dozen arrows. It definitely takes some time to get them all taken care of. You see I have all uh, uh, 12 of them here, all with those uh, three uh, five-inch feathers with that right helical. I think they're fantastic-looking shafts. Um, <clears throat> and before I move on to the next step, I want to talk really quickly about adhesives for fletching. Um, so for feathers, 
Um, you can uh, use boning tape. It comes in these rolls. It's very uh, inexpensive. It's uh, very convenient. It's very nice. I would not use this for any sort of plastic vein, be it a blazer vein or an Arizona fletch kind of thing or any sort of fletching you would use for a 3D shoot or a paper shoot. Um, uh, this stuff is strictly for feathers. For uh, feathers and for veins, you can use any different type of glue that you like. Um, if you were to Google, you know, best fletching glue, you'll get 47,000 answers. I have never had a problem, and this seems to be hit and miss with a lot of people, but I've never had a problem with boning fletch type platinum, um, especially with a wrap. I've never had a problem with a wrap. That plus fletch type platinum, I have had perfect adhesion pass throughs on animals. I've shot them into trees and bushes and rocks. Never had a vein rip off, and actually if the vein does rip off, it's because the wrap, the vein, and the glue all came off at once. Actually this is going to be the glue we're going to use here for the next step. The next step here is um, this arrow is ready to go. It has the, the fletchings are, sol are solidly on there with the tape but they're not perfectly solidly on there for the amount of shooting that these arrows are going to see and a amount of um, uh, uh, shooting that I just would feel comfortable with them anyway. I like to do what I call tipping and tailing and a lot of guys do this as well. You take your um, standard glue so we have tape underneath here um, and what I like to do is I like to put Put some uh, glue at the uh, tip here of each feather and then at the tail end of each feather here. So I'm going to put a decent amount of glue actually up there on the front end. So this arrow, uh, so that feather in particular, excuse me, really doesn't have a chance to go anywhere. I don't want it to start peeling up because, especially it's true with tape, um, as soon as that, uh, that fletch starts to peel up, the whole thing goes. Um, which is okay. Um, it makes uh, uh, replacing the fletchings very simple. I'm going function over form here and I want these arrows to last a long time. And I would do this whether I was doing uh, feathers or veins. I know you can't probably see it in the camera but now I'm going to let this um, uh, uh, dry and solidify and I'm going to give it the 48 hours that um, Boating recommends you give. I'm going to do this for the remaining 11 arrows and then we'll have the uh, almost finished product. Well, we just tipped and tailed all of the uh, arrows on the end of each feather for the fletching and uh, so they're all sitting up here and they're drying and while they're drying we're gonna add the inserts into the front end now there are a couple ways you can um, uh, adhere your inserts on the inside of your shaft you can use some sort of cyanoacrylate I'm a personal fan of hot melt um, and what hot melt is is just a fancy term for uh, a hot glue uh, like a hot glue gun kind of thing. Now, um, you can buy hot melt, um, the actual glue for it. Um, Easton makes them, um, I believe, uh, while well, boning, which is, is which is Easton, uh, uh, makes a particular stick. But I just use low temperature or mid temperature um, hot glue gun craft sticks. And they come in the packs of 100, 200, whatever at Walmart for not that much money. And I have enough glue to last me a lifetime. A lot of people say you're not supposed to use it with carbon shafts. That is to an extent true. If you're stupid with it, you're not supposed to use it with carbon shafts. But if you know what you're doing, and it's actually not that difficult, um, it's actually very simple. So you never want to heat the direct carbon of the shaft. You always want to heat the insert. Um, and uh, let me uh, go through a couple of steps and I'll show you how I do it so that way I keep myself safe and keep the, uh, the arrow safe. I'm going to treat my inserts the same way I treated the inside of the shaft. Now you can clean them with acetone, a little bit on a paper towel. I just take that dry paper towel. They are very um, sterile if you want to use that phrase inside this package. They are machined and then they're put in here. So just in case there's any grease or you know some sort of thing on like that on them. There's no going to be no fingerprints, there's no carbon on them. So I'm just going to wipe now the paper towel. I just use a candle. Um, it's a very controlled, very hot focus flame and it's perfect, perfect temperature for doing something like a low temperature hot melt stick. Um, so what I like to do is I just have my shaft down here, which you, if you recall, um, we cleaned the inside of this already so it's good to go. I'll put that down here and I take both the um, insert which has a field tip on it and I'm holding the field tip so that way I don't burn my fingers off when I put it inside the candle here. And I'm going to take it and the hot melt stick and I'm going to put them in there at the same time. This does not take very long because that candle flame is so controlled and so intense. Now you don't need a, uh, a whole uh, ton of glue, but all I'm doing here is I'm heating the stick and then smearing it onto the insert. Hot glue. Now you could probably heat it up with a, with a, with a glue gun, but I like the candle so I can keep heating it uh, over and over and over again. 
Now this glue is cooling and it, that's not good because now you can't push it into the aero shaft, but it's okay because I can reheat it up with a can. I have a uh, dishcloth here and I've just made it wet with water, it doesn't have to be cold or hot or anything, and all it's going to do is it's going to absorb the heat um, when I put the insert into the shaft. Let me show you how I'm going to do it. This is a very quick process. Slide it into the tip of the shaft and then I have a hole here in my board and then I'm going to take this cloth wrap it around the whole back, front end of the arrow. It doesn't take very long, about 10, 15 seconds. Pull it off, perfectly cool. Did not damage the carbon in any way. And then I have this little ring of glue, excess glue, and this, the beauty thing about hot metal is I can just grab one in and it all pulls off. Just unscrew the tip, and I have an inserted arrow. We have an arrow. Um, and uh, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, all I have to do now is wait for the um, fletch tight to dry. I give it 48 hours on the feathers um, and then screw a point in it and we have an arrow that's ready to uh, take to the range or to the woods. So I'm pretty tickled with that. That's pretty good. So there's your uh, finished product there. Take this point out. Out of all 12 uh, points hot melted in there, this arrow is ready to go. Uh, give it 48 hours of drying uh, for the uh, fletch, uh, fletching glue there up front, so the, for the tip and the tails, and you have an arrow that's ready for the uh, target range, you're ready for the woods. So I hope you're able to learn something from that. If you have any questions, please do uh, ask them in the comments section below. I'm always willing to help. I'm always ready to answer. Um, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Until then, I uh, hope you're able to get out and enjoy the sport of archery, maybe creating your own arrows. I hope you're able to enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll see you next time.